Nelson settles, goes for the end zone, it is tipped away, and for a touchdown! It's caught! It was deflected, and found Marcus Matthews! Makes the spike! Makes the spike and throws for the end zone! Touchdown! Cody Hoffman! 11 days away from the opener for the BYU Cougars at home with the other Cougars, Mike Leach and Washington State. Greg Rubel, the play by play voice of the BYU Cougars on KSL News Radio, is here to join us. Okay, camp is officially over, correct? Right. And they've gone into game plan mode for Washington State. It starts Monday. So, yeah. what uh, you've been to basically every uh, day of uh, fall football camp. Is there one thing that was going into camp that was a concern and you said, okay, that's no longer a concern? Well, I, I think I wanted to see uh, how the offensive line would come together with the ground game. And I think the way the running backs responded in both scrimmages, and once the O-line got rid of the kind of the bumps and bruises that kept some cohesion from developing, once that came together, I think in the second scrimmage, Bronco, uh, the offensive coordinator, Brandon Doman, and, and those who attended saw that this ground game, I think, is in pretty good shape to start the season, which wasn't really the case last year. If there was one thing that held BYU back last year, in addition to the issues they had maybe uh, at quarterback and then with Brandon kind of feeling his way as a new OC, I think it was the ground game wasn't ready to be really reliable and I think it's a different situation this time around. Well Josh Kazada announced that he was uh, leaving BYU before uh, uh, fall camp and so that put a lot of pressure on Michael Elisa to be the guy to get the most of the carries and but in scrimmages he didn't play a lot but you had other guys David Foote, Adam Hine and a uh, uh, couple Williams. other guys Jamar Williams they yeah. played pretty well. Well you know it's funny because uh, had Josh stayed uh, they, they would have been just so much deeper. Even as it is without Josh Kazada, there's still a pretty deep backfield right now. I think you look at Mike Elisa and Yona Pritchard as your big one-two punch. And, 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 then, and then you throw a true fullback in like, like Zed Mendenhall. Then you bring in David Foote, who like Yona's kind of a good combo back. And, and David's kind of the under-the-radar guy. He's now on scholarship. and is a really productive runner, really has been throughout his entire BYU career, although he's been kind of late in games, that kind of guy. Now he gets more of a marquee role. So, so, so you have those three or four guys that you kind of know about. Then you throw in a Jamal Williams and an Adam Hine and a wild card in Paul Lasique, who's a rugby guy. And you've got now you've got four, five, six, seven guys who can kind of uh, uh, bring different elements to the table and give BYU, I think, a lot of punch it was lacking last season. Well, Brandon Doman, Bronco Menal, will they find playing time for all these guys? Well, I don't think I don't think they'll have to be the man. I think Michael Elisa can be seen justifiably as the number one back right now. And then there will be enough snaps to go around, but you can't expect them all to, to you know, to, to, to forecast. Yeah. marquee roles, but I don't think it has to be the case with this team. All right, Riley Nelson, he is the uh, undisputed leader of this team, the Riley factor that everybody's saying. Uh, what did you see in his play? Does he have complete control over not only the physical aspects of this offense, but also the mental aspect of his teammates? I think so. Let's wait to see the games, but, uh, you know, midway through camp, Brandon Dome was calling the team roughly about a 70% passing team, and, and that number inches up even a little bit once you get to play action now, and Riley's a good play action quarterback. They love getting him on the move and he's a decent thrower on the move and I think that uh, everything Riley showed in camp was that yeah this can be his team in every possible way the playbook is as is as as full as it needs to be to take to take advantage of all of Riley Nelson's attributes and he has uh, receivers he loves Cody Hoffman that's his favorite go-to guy yeah, and, and there's really kind of a big three right now, uh, and each has its respective position. At X, you've got Cody Hoffman. At, uh, at Z, you've got Ross Oppo. And then at H, you've got uh, J.D. Falslip. And that is your top three. And while everyone looks for maybe a fourth receiver, I think it'll be like four, five, and six because uh, depending on the spot they're going to, there are enough guys to go around to give BYU good receiver depth. That's all the good stuff. And you said that the line play with the running game was a concern. Now, was there anything going into camp that you thought, okay, this is going to be okay, and now it's a concern after the first couple weeks. Not so much, but uh, at D-line, Bronco Mendenhall was counting on, on four seniors uh, to play three spots, essentially, and that's Ethan Manumelayuna, Romney Funga, Ian Doolin, and Russell Tialavea. Four seniors, and they play a three or four, of course. Ian Doolin uh, has missed the last week and a half or so with, uh, with a back issue, and he'll be iffy right up until game time. So that's a guy I'm counting on that we didn't see a lot in camp at right end. Now, that said, I think Bronco feels good about a five and a six in Mike Muleman and Remington Peck, who's a return missionary, and kind of uh, uh, maybe a six, a six with an asterisk, but closer to a four is maybe Ziggy Ansa. Ziggy Ansa, who's a weak side linebacker, can also be a defensive end. Great and, spring ball for Ziggy. Oh, absolutely, and, and a good camp for Ziggy. And so you can see Ziggy thing. I think I think playing multiple roles. One of them might end up being at that end, especially if Ian Doolin's not right. And you are pulling for Ziggy because you want to say on KSL News Radio, <laughs> Ziggy Sack. 
and, and Ziggy's Ghana get you. He's from Ghana, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, he's a fun player to watch. And, and Bronco said, uh, um, I, I think after spring heading into summer, that uh, he's a guy that just, just from physical attributes alone could play at the next level with a big season. 6'6", 270. Yeah. And, and I think BYU fans expect and hope to see Ziggy in the backfield a lot this year. Linebacker, solid. They got some studs there. They have national award candidates at three of the four linebacking spots right now with the other a contested battle between Spencer Hadley and Alani Fua. Mm -hmm. And then beyond those guys, the backups, especially inside, when you can call you know, Zach Stout and, and Wani Unga and Manoa Pakula as backup inside linebackers, you're pretty deep. And again, Ziggy can really play behind Kyle Van Noy along with Kevin Bills behind Van Noy at the weak side. They're solid. Pretty much injury-free uh, throughout uh, fall camp. Kyle Van Noy coming back from surgery, cleared to play just last week. Uh, he's okay, right? Yeah, uh, and, and, and they wouldn't let him play until he met certain protocol, and he really did. And so now, now of course, BYU fans want to see how he, hit, how he hits and takes a hit. But really, he played kind of hampered last year and was exceptional playing kind of with one wing last year. Uh, there are two broken hands that were suffered in camp. Uh, Devin Mahina, a tight end, might miss the first game or two. Solomon Kafu is an offensive lineman, iffy for the first game. So there were things like that and, and, and ankle sprains. But for the most part, uh, it was a pretty healthy camp. And a lot of that has to do with how Bronco ran camp this year, which was limited pads, limited contact, not going live, fully live, ask you except about for the that. A lot of questions, people saying, well, how can you go through a camp without hitting? I well, mean, and then you know that in that first game, if there's some missed tackles, they're going to say, oh, that's because he never allowed hitting in camp. Well, in a lot of ways, it's, it's an NFL-type model where you just try and keep the guys healthy for game time. Now, And because of the live scrimmages, now they did go live in both those scrimmages, but a lot of the starters, project starters, were held out. So we really haven't seen maybe all of the ones go against the ones in a hard-hitting scenario. I think in the, in the week or so leading up to Washington State, you're going to see those first-string defenders, though, get after the scout teamers. Uh, pity on them in yeah, practice coming yeah. up the next week or so. They're called yeah. the meat squad. Yeah, for the a reason. Scout team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, Greg, you've got uh, BYU football covered uh, on all platforms. Uh, let us know where we can uh, hear you and see your writings. Well, okay, we've got, uh, first of all, the Twitter, at uh, Greg Rubel on Twitter. I'm, I'm always on that and putting stuff out there pretty nonstop. Uh, KSL.com at the BYU page gives you Cougar Tracks, the blog uh, I produce. And then, of course, the games on KSL Radio, 102.7 FM, 1160 AM. And our coaches' shows will start with Bronco on the first Sunday of the season. We'll be on here. Yep. every Sunday night at 11 o'clock, 11.05. All right, Gregor Bell, the play-by-play -play voice of the BYU Cougars. Thanks, man. And, you know, it's almost here. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Let's get it going. You want to hit? We'll do this. Okay. All right. <laughs>